Hello friends. So I'm starting a new series of videos on this channel, all about series, I suppose. So fantasy, sci-fi series, mostly adult for now. I could get into some young adult. Actually, if you guys want me to include those, maybe I should, maybe I should film them separately. I don't know. It's just occurring to me now. Side note, before we get started, I couldn't be bothered to blow dry my hair before this. So my hair is drying and wet. I just got out of the shower and I don't think anyone will care but also I don't like blow drying my hair because obviously it damages it. Today, what we're gonna be talking about is fantasy series that I would like to start in the near future. I've made a list of 10 books. This is not an exhaustive list. This list might have been exhausting to make because to be honest, there's not that many fantasy series that I'm dying to get into, which is, really rather sad and it's actually going to be the topic of another video I'm going to be making soon because I'm perplexed what's kind of going on with fantasy in the last couple of years compared to before. Anyways, we'll save that topic for another time. Let me know if you are interested in seeing me sort of talk about my feelings when it comes to that. Today we'll just focus on the series that I'm hoping to start. I don't know if I put these in an order of books that I like the one that I'm most excited for until the one that I'm least excited for. But let's get into the list. I would love your feedback and opinions so you guys can let me know how to prioritize these because there's 10 series on this list and so I'm not gonna get to all of them this year, probably, more than likely. Okay, the first book series that I wanna start is The Dandelion Dynasty by Ken Liu. So this begins with The Grace of Kings. Now, this is for sure gonna happen because I've already bought a physical copy of this book and it's likely going to be one of the next few books that I pick up. I think this gained popularity when I was sort of burnt out from fantasy and so I ignored a lot of the talk about it. With that being said, I still heard like mostly all good things and so I really want to check it out now, especially now that I'm really wanting to read more series. I'm in a dedicated series mood where I want to get like devoted to characters in a world and story and so this I don't know much about. The genre tags are fantasy, like epic high fantasy, steampunk, sci-fi, adventure and war. So what really catches my attention is, I don't know if you guys have seen the UK covers for this, but when I look at the UK covers, which are drop dead gorgeous, by the way, it's not at all what I expected this fantasy series to be based on the US covers. UK usually wins in my opinion, but anyways, I'm really hoping to love this. I've heard only great things about Ken Liu's writing. So I just see like conscripted armies, silk draped airships, shape-shifting gods, overthrowing an emperor, two sides forming with different ideas about how the world should be run and the meaning of justice. So let me know what you guys think because I'm really, really excited about this one. And I believe that there's like several out in the series already. I don't know how many series, how many books are going to be in the series, but either way, I'm like, I'm really excited about this one, you guys. Another series I would like to start is Empire of the Wolf by Richard Swan. So The Justice of Kings is book number one. And once again, there was a lot of hype and buzz around this book when I was burnt out from fantasy. So I really didn't give it that much thought. The genre tags for this are epic, high fantasy, sci-fi, dark fantasy so that sounds perfect once again i don't know how many books are going to be in this series but it has a very high average rating on goodreads and i've talked to a friend recently who really enjoyed it said it was like one of the best books he read last year so i'm hoping that i can say the same thing oh it's a trilogy it's following a detective judge and executioner all in one as he unravels a web of secrets and lies he discovers a plot that might destroy his order once and for all and bring down the entire empire. When he investigates the murder of a noblewoman, he finds his authority being challenged like never before. As the simple case becomes more complex and convoluted, he begins to pull at the threads that unravel a conspiracy that could see an end to all justices and a beginning to lawless chaos across the empire. So I don't know, I don't know what to expect with this, but it's one I wanna to get to very soon. Like these first couple are ones that I know I will get to this year. The last ones, who knows? So one more that I'm actually going to be reading next month is the Darkwater Legacy series by Chris Wooding. And that begins with the Ember Blade. I've heard amazing things about this. And I've heard that it's for fans of The Lord of the Rings. And so I love The Lord of the Rings. It is my all-time favorite fantasy series ever. And so I'm just hoping that 
It gives me those feelings without trying to copy it. Designed to return to classic fantasy adventures and values from a modern perspective, this is a fast-moving, coming-of-age trilogy featuring a strong cast of diverse characters, brilliant set pieces, and a powerful character and plot-driven story. That gives me nothing good reads, but I mean, I like all of those things, and a trilogy sounds great once again. And I like the idea of returning to this classic type of fantasy with a modern twist on it. So let me know what you guys think, but I have heard so many good things about this one in the past. I feel like it's my time, and I need to finally pick it up. Next is the War Arts Saga by Wesley Chu, which begins with The Art of Prophecy, beautiful freaking cover, which caught my attention at the very beginning. So once again, this is kind of advertised as sci-fi fantasy. I don't know how much it will actually be. So this is a, a story of prophecy, a story of master and student, assassin and revolutionary, of fallen gods and broken prophecies, and of war between kingdoms, and love and friendship between deadly rivals. That's all I'm really gonna say because I don't think I need to read too much into the synopsis for you because obviously as I'm reading these later on in the year, I will give you more updates and information about them. But this is one I've talked about a couple times on my channel, I feel like already this year. It's an epic fantasy ode to martial arts and magic. Already sounds great. The story of a spoiled hero, an exacting grandmaster and an immortal god king. It has a really high Goodreads rating as well. So this one, these first four, mm, got to get to them very soon. The fifth one as well. In fact, I already own a copy of this one. So I already own three of these. I own The Grace of Kings, The Pariah, and The Justice of Kings. Nope, and The Ember Blade. So I spoiled it. The fifth series I want to start is Covenant of Steel by Anthony Ryan, which begins with The Pariah. So I have already read one book by this author, and I just really liked his writing, and I really am intrigued by this cover and the synopsis. So I picked it up at the bookstore the other day. It says dark fantasy. So our main character is raised as an outlaw who has this comradeship of fellow thieves. I already love that idea and trope. Um, an act of betrayal sends him on a new path of blood and vengeance, which leads him to a soldier's life in the king's army. But as dark forces, both human and arcane, gather to oppose the noble woman's rise, Alwyn faces a choice. Can he be a warrior or will he always be an outlaw? And I feel like almost Joe Abercrombie vibes from that. I don't know. So I think it sounds super intriguing and very high on my list. The next one is a series I've started before and I've sort of always regretted putting down because I really enjoyed the amount that I got through it. That is Memory, Sorrow, and Thorn series by Tad Williams, which begins with the Dragon Bone Chair. So I made it halfway through book one, the Dragon Bone Chair, and I was loving it. And I think I had to put it down for something else that just came out. I can't exactly remember, but I know I was having a really good time and I really liked the author's writing. This author has a ton of work Work, and I think is still writing new work. So I think this is just a trilogy because it first came out in like the 80s, I believe. A war fueled by the powers of dark sorcery is about to engulf the peaceful land of Austin Ard. For Prester John, the High King lies dying. And with his death, the Storm King, the undead ruler of the elf-like Sithi, seizes a chance to regain his lost realm through a pact with the newly ascended king. Knowing the consequences of this bargain, the king's younger brother joins with a small scattered group of scholars, the League of the Scroll, to confront the true danger threatening Austin Ard. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but like you start out fine, you start out following a young character and I think that time might pass kind of quickly through this and the whole idea of like joining in with the others and learning all of this unknown like secretive stuff sounds really interesting and obviously this series has a lot of esteem and has been very well loved so I would really like to give it a try again. Next we have one I'm not so sure about and that is The Legends of the First Empire by Michael J. Sullivan. I've read by this author before The Theft of Swords and I really enjoyed that but it was like a little more lighthearted than I wanted at the time. So this is a new series and I don't think you have to have completed The Theft of Swords because I've only read those first two books and this is a six book series. I don't really know much about it. It says since time immemorial humans have worshipped the gods they call Frey truly a race apart, invincible in battle, masters of magic, and seemingly immortal. But when a god falls to a human blade, the balance of power between humans and those they thought were gods changes forever. Now only a few stand between humankind and annihilation. Wraith, reluctant to embrace his identity as the god killer. Siri, 
a young seer burdened by signs of impending doom, and Persephone, who must overcome personal tragedy to lead her people. The age of myth is over. The time of rebellion has begun. That does sound very fascinating to me. I've heard recently on another booktuber's channel that they were really enjoying it, and so this is one that I just kind of have on my radar, and I would love to hear what you guys think, and if you think I'll enjoy it. Another one that I've owned the ebook of for forever, I've already talked about it this year as well, but I wanted to include it on this list for that reason is Burning Blade and Silver Eye by Django Wexler. So this begins with Ashes of the Sun. I think this is dealing with siblings who got separated and brought up in very different ways. And when they reunite, they're not what they expected of one another. One wields magic and is a warrior. And so they're kind of on opposite sides, I think, of this like order and war. I really don't know too much, but this is supposed to be a trilogy. It might already, already even be finished. I'm not sure. But I really haven't heard too many people talk about it. The cover has always been very intriguing to me. I already own the ebook and it just sounds more interesting than a lot of the fantasy that's been released in 2022 and 2021. I know I sound kind of like pretentious, but I'm not, but you know what I mean? We'll talk about it later. Next we have Legacy Trilogy by Matthew Ward, which begins with Legacy of Ash. I haven't heard much about this either, but the cover and the idea sort of caught my eye. I always see it at the bookstore. We have these ruling families plotting against each other who used to be the protectors of justice and democracy. One a warrior, one a political prisoner, and then one sister. So war spreads across the Republic. These three must set aside their differences in order to save their home. Yet decades of bad blood are not easily set aside and victory, if it comes at all, will demand a darker price than any of them could have imagined. So I love like ruling families warring against each other. And I have seen that the sequel in this has higher ratings than the first one even. So maybe it like improves. I don't really know what else this author has written. Maybe, maybe this is his only series so far, but just by reading his little bio on Goodreads, he seemed kind of cool and like a funny guy. So I don't know. I want to give this a try. Have you guys read this? Have you heard of it even? And the 10th one I want to talk about today is, is rather new. It's The Night and Its Moon by Piper CJ. And this book I think already has a sequel. It might be a bit more like romantic fantasy. I don't know. The reason I'm including on this list one, because I don't have a lot of things to choose from right now. And two, because I always see it at the bookstore and it intrigues me and it catches my eye and I want to pick it up, but I never do. So there's this orphanage that is sort of undercover, but it's dealing with beautiful orphans. But there's Knox and Faye touched characters and these kids at the orphanage are for sale, I think. There's assassins and hidden identities, Faye magic, mundane, alliances. So we'll see. Let me know if you guys have read this. The reason I'm putting it on here is like I said, I just always see it and it seems interesting and it could be something to get invested in. I don't know how many books are gonna be in this series, but yeah, I caught my eye. So those are 10 fantasy series that are on my radar to start this year. As I said before, I'm gonna make a video going over all of the like major fantasy series and sci-fi series that I've read. I'm not opposed to starting sci-fi series either, but like newer sci-fi just hasn't caught my attention. So first of all, I'd love your recommendations in the comments. If you guys have anywhere for me to go, please do tell me because I am in desperate need of great fantasy, similar to these on the shelves behind me. But until then, we're gonna give these a go. Let me know what fantasy series you guys are looking to start this year. I would love to hear. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time.